Okay, I'm coming back before you like I had said earlier on this Saturday, October the 7th, 2023. And I have a, um, a prophetic teaching, something I just want to share. And it has to do uh, a lot with Revelations chapter 17 verses uh, 3 through 7. If I read that far down, I'm not for sure if I will. But like I always say, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, it helps my channel grow if you like, share, and subscribe. If you find the content um, interesting or if it relates to who you are as a prophet, uh, evangelist, or uh, an apostle, like, share, and subscribe. It really does help my channel out and helps uh, it to move through the algorithms and ultimately grow. So, what I want to share is Father God keep, continues to tell us about our separation from this world system. And I have found something very interesting in Revelations chapter 17 that I want to share. If my granddaughter comes out here, I'm going to tell her to say hi and dismiss her. So, she may pop up. <laughs> um, but let's go into this because I want to share some things out of Revelation chapter 17. Uh, we'll start at verse 1. It says, And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vows and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, come up here. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore, that sitteth up on many waters. With whom the kings of the earth. Have committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth. Have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. The kings of the earth are all leaders around the world. These are kings. Um, and we have to realize that when we read Revelations, before when I was young in the faith, a lot of these things I didn't understand. And so now that I'm matured in the faith, I'm able to understand things that are, are written in Revelations because that was a book that many people strayed away from out of it being difficult to uh, decipher. And so now we, uh, we understand that with whom the kings of the earth are all leaders. Down in verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit up on a scarlet color, uh, colored beast full of names of blasphemy. Having seven heads and ten horns. Now the, uh, let's go back up. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. All through the... Um, Old Testament of the Bible, it has always talked about the wilderness. We talk about wilderness experiences today. And so there's there's many, many teachings about being in the wilderness, in a wilderness experience. So I want to talk about the wilderness because it's very important to understand what the wilderness truly represents for us today. And I'm sorry for shaking this thing. Let me move it back a little bit. Um... But what is the wilderness? The wilderness is a lo locale for intense experiences of stark need for food and water, like manna, manna and quail, of isolation, like El Elijah in the still small voice of Yahweh, or danger and divine deliverance, like Hagar and Ishmael. Of renewal or encounters with Yahweh as uh, Moses had. So <clears throat> the wilderness is a type of separation from the total will of God. Total support, total care, and safety. We have in uh, a nail. Uh, no, I'm not going to say that. We have limited ourselves from the care an activity of uh, Yahweh, uh, the Messiah, over our lives to cover us and to keep us in, and uh, bringing us into different areas of maturity. We 
stagnate that particular process when we're in the wilderness. As long as we marvel at her and have turned away from Yahweh, we will continue to suffer as the world suffers. And I want to talk about the marvel part. Down in verse 7, uh, it says, And the angel said unto John, Apostle John, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which have the seven heads and the ten horns. So he's then, he said, why do you think that that's a great sight of, of, of such a marvelous thing, this woman that sits on the beast? This is marveling after the world and all of its uh, riches where it talks about these things in verse 4. In verse 4 it says, And the woman was arrayed in purple, scarlet, colorous, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having, gold, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So it talks about all the, the, the glorious fame and riches and uh, trinkets of the world. That's what chapter, I mean, verse 4 is talking about. And down at verse 7, where uh, the angel asked uh, Apostle John, what are you marveling at? That's nothing to, to marvel about. This woman that sits on the beast, uh, which is the, this world's system that sits on the beast. Chapter, I mean, uh, verse 3 in chapter 17. So he carried me away. In the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit up on a scarlet colored beast. Wilderness. When we talk about wilderness, this is a place where we have to be, where we're separated from God to a, a certain extent, stint, and we have to be fed hand um, to mouth by uh, Yahweh, where there's difficulties, where there's a hard time, where we have to be fed manna and quail, you know, just use that as an example. This is the wilderness experience. The separation from her means come away and be ye separated. All things, this is where we are being called to build, okay, separated out of all things, I'm sorry. And this is where we're being called to build Goshen, storehouses. I want to use the Amish uh, people as a representation of what uh, coming from this world system looks like. Um, the Amish live a very close life to what Yahweh is called the his bride to live. Except we, they don't have the gifts, the talents, uh, and the skills as far as entertainment, uh, all of these different things, uh, sports, um, you know, the things that we go, football, things of that nature. Uh, gymnastics they don't have all of those things but we are to really look like the Amish people and how they live we are to build our own we are to have our own banks stores we're going to have to do this we're going to have to have a system of ourselves as far as um, bringing in supplies into those areas where Father God is releasing the well transfer into the hands of those that are going back into the uh, uh, the place of influence to build these things. Uh, our schools back into, um, I want to say Christianity, but I don't even like standing on Christianity. Uh, and that's a whole nother teaching by itself. But to build uh, schools back into the, the body of Christ. Uh, building um, banks into the body of Christ. Uh, stores. Um, being ha able to have agriculture where we have clean meat like the Amish do. And those other, uh, I can't think of the other name of the people, but the, like the Amish do, they have their own meat. They have their own produce and, and uh, 
uh, uh, eggs and, and all those things. They have their own. So this is where we're going to have to come back into doing these things. Separating ourselves from this world's economy. For one, it's going to fail. And it's going to cause a great famine around the world when it does. The United States will lose everything in the, this great fall, even the demise of the dollar. It would be almost worthless. And so now we, we as the United States, will step down to second or third. We won't be number one anymore. This is where we have to wake up and realize Father God is speaking to us. He's speaking through to the prophets. He's speaking to those ones that are uh, here to give warning to allow God's people to understand that we have to be about Yahweh's business. The Messiah is releasing the word through the prophets. The Most High is releasing everything we need through the prophets. And some of us don't like uh, the fact that I call myself a prophet because I'm a woman or whatever that may look like for those that have a problem with uh, people using the word prophet. Well, we can miss the move of God if we want to. We can miss what Father God is saying and doing if we choose to. Because we have a choice. But Father God is continuing to speak. And in Revelations chapter 17, he is saying a lot. Especially with the wilderness. The wilderness is this world's systems. It is. When it says that, uh, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness plain as day right there in verse 3 we talk about the wilderness all through revelations and what rev and what wilderness looks like and what the experiences of being in the wilderness is like moses uh talks about the wilderness uh, I mean, that particular part of the wilderness. Elijah went through the wilderness and was supposed to go back through the wilderness. There's so many. Uh, 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 the, the Messiah, the Most High, was taken into the wilderness. 40 days and 40 nights. So this is a place. He was shown the riches of the world. All of these grand things. Wilderness. So when Father God says, come out from amongst her and be ye separated, this is what he's saying. Look at chapter 17 for you in, uh, in Revelations for yourself. And look at the things that Father God is trying to draw us out of. That he can bring us into a safe place in him. That we understand what Goshen is and what building the storehouse as uh, Joseph uh, did in uh, Egypt. These are the same things we're going to have to do today. And there's no more time to think that this is coming some different type of way because it is not. We are going to have to face the fact that we're living out revelations and that Father God is speaking to us through revelations. Allowing us to understand where we are and where we're, where uh, he's trying to lead us to. We are to be building uh, storehouses. As some call Goshen. We are. What does that entail? And what have Father God put in your heart to build? If he's releasing part of the wealth transfer to you, what are you building? What is he giving you to build? He's only releasing the wealth transfer into the hands of those people that are builders. That are building. That have something to uh, bring to be a solution to many of God's people during the time of famine. This is what Father God is. So let's be on board when we talk about God releasing his word through the prophets. And listening to those key things that the prophets are saying. That we stay right where God is calling us to be. I talked about many of us Father God is releasing right now. Uh, from preparation into position where you're needed. Not where we want to be, but where we're needed. Many he is redirecting. He's giving you a different direction. And some of you should be able to uh, 
have a confirmation with that because he's been speaking to you about some things that you wouldn't even that wasn't even on your heart or your mind because he's redirecting you into another um uh area but all of us are going into a position uh eventually where we're needed and the money the wealth transfer on whatever level whether it's revenue houses land uh, uh, commercial property, whatever that may be, will be used and utilized for the building of the kingdom to sustain many of God's people during the time of famine. That's exactly what it's re being released for. Many people will argue with me, oh, I'm going to get all this money through the Shibu Inu coins or the, uh, uh, the different coins, and they, they stay mad at me about this. But Father God gave me a dream about the coins that I'm going to stand on it. He said that the people that are contemplating receiving a lot of money from these areas will lose everything. When this great crash happens, it's going to hit every sector of government, the e economics, the, e the economy. Everything will be hit. So he's preparing us. Wake up, focus, and listen. Until I come back again, as Father God leads me to, uh, you have a great, awesome uh, weekend. Uh, and like, share, and subscribe, like I've always said. Be blessed.